Hello and welcome back. Um, so in this video, we are going to look at radio nucleate imaging, sometimes also referred to as nuclear medicine. Um, so this will kind of officially conclude all the radiologic uh, imaging uh, systems that you generally would run into. Okay, so here's the overall uh, content. Uh, we're going to look at the physics of this uh, particular modality and briefly look at you know planar scintigraphy spec and PET. These are the three different um, imaging uh, modalities which come under radionuclide imaging or uh, nuclear medicine. Okay, so uh, what is uh, the physics of uh, nuclear medicine? Okay, so this these set of imaging modalities that we are going to see, um, they are collectively referred to as nuclear imaging or radionuclide imaging, um, and which basically involves a radioactive substance uh, being introduced into the body, and then you allow for some time for the body to take up these substances right so this is why it's this this particular imaging um, modality is referred to as functional imaging modality because the tracer um, actually interacts with, uh, with you know uh, with the biology right? there is a biological interaction interaction between the tracer and the body also so the physiological interaction if you can call it so which means that more than the anatomy itself like previously we were looking at even with uh, ct mri or, or, or ultrasound you are mostly concerned with the structure, right? So you look at anatomical structures. Or there are different contrast mechanisms, especially in MR that you have seen. But in this case, it's mostly uh, this, this is functional imaging. Basically, we're trying to do what is called physiological imaging. Okay. And how is, how do we do that? And we it's it's accomplished by looking at variations in concentrations of the radioactive tracer. Okay. And that then uh, the hypothesis is that the uh, the variation will indicate that something is wrong. So, for instance, uh, there is a um, you know isotope of iodine that is used for imaging. Okay, iodine is readily absorbed by the thyroid gland. So, any uh, radioactively tagged uh, you know, uh, uh, any radioisotope of iodine would be would be uh, would normally go and get accumulated in the thyroid glands, which will give you an indication of how good those glands are working. Okay, so this is the uh, you know, one of the very simple examples of how uh, you would do, you would use, um, you know, radio tracers as they are called um, for uh, imaging purposes, okay. So, the, on the right, the picture shows a typical imaging system. So, we have the, uh, if you can call it, uh, we have the patient here and then we have injected the patient with the radio tracer or the radionuclide and um, it has gone and uh, accumulated somewhere in the body and it emits most of the time. In fact, um, all the time, the, the preferred choice of emission is gamma rays. So, the gamma rays are basically high energy X-ray photons, right? You can think of it as similar to X-ray, high energy photons. Um, and uh, they are typically mono-energetic, uh, since they have the sim sim uh, single energy. So, for instance, 140 kV is a typical energy, okay? And outside the body, we have a bank of uh, crystals, uh, you know, collimators, and behind which there is a scintillator crystal. Scintillator crystal traps these high energy uh, particles that are emitted uh, and I add it and uh, there is a uh, converts that into light which are detected by photomolite multiplier tubes or photodiodes. Now there is a big difference I mean um, between this and the other modalities that you have seen so far it's just that you know you, you see the source quote unquote you, you, can, you can call it that is actually inside the body okay, that's a big difference. So if you look at all the imaging, other imaging systems there is usually a deposition of energy either in the form of radio frequency or you know um, in the case of MRI or an X-ray source outside the body or an ultrasound basically you know sound source right ultrasound source. So all these are outside the body and then it travels through and then we sense it out, outside again. So in this case the source of radiation the source of uh, radiation that is whatever we are sensing actually comes from inside okay but we have injected it and then the idea is to localize and measure it okay. So this is the typical setup for all uh, radionuclear imaging, including scintigraphy, planar scintigraphy, SPECT or PET. Okay. So, um, so just to summarize again, the nuclear medicine, a tracer molecule, we call it a tracer molecule or a radio tracer, is administered to the patient by intravenous injection. That is typical. And what is this tracer? It is basically a molecule carrying an unstable isotope. It is basically a radionuclide, right? And typically, these isotopes emit gamma radiation that is high energy photons uh, while at the same time being metabolized by the human body. This is what I meant. There is a physiologic uh, imaging happening here rather than just the uh, um, anatomical imaging. Okay. The gamma radiation emitted uh, turns out to be proportional to the concentration of the tracer 
and which can be then the emitted radiation is recorded and uh, based on the emitted uh, no I mean uh, photon count uh, we can uh, estimate the concentration of the activity so we are not exactly do the absolute concentration but something known as uh, um, the activity concentration right so it's not just the um, uh, concentration of the substance itself but rather something known as the activity concentration is what is measured so activity concentration is measured so this we can actually show um, you know using simple mathematics but just uh, but but just to uh, give you an example so for instance when you are doing x ray imaging basically let's say x ray ct what you are measuring is the underlying quantity you are measuring is the linear attenuation coefficient right the attenuation coefficient is what you are trying to measure when you and this that attenuation coefficient uh, is typically turns out to be proportional to the uh, or uh, depends on the you know the atomic number uh, density of the element right so in this case what are what we are measuring even though we will be counting the uh, gamma uh, radiation the number of photons in the gamma radiation the mean photon count is recorded typically using that what is being projected as a mean photon count is something known as the activity concentration which in turn gives an indication of the actual concentration of the radio tracer at that particular tissue location so we will mention we will measure this as a both a both as a function of uh, position and time okay um, so this entire system uh, of the, all the systems that we have seen like i said before is known as functional imaging rather than anatomical imaging okay so just a primer on radioactive decay and so radioactive decay is the rearrangement of nuclei to lower energy state so there are some nuclei which are inherently unstable right and these nuclei tend to go to lower energy states um, again this and this lower energy states corresponds to a greater mass defect this is again uh, a, a comes from the physics of um, radioactive decay right so um, so basically the sum of the uh, so the parts tends to be lesser than the uh, you know individual sums right so if you look at the um, if you if you calculate the mass of the protons and neutrons of an of an atom and then you actually measure the nucleus of the atom so that, that weight tends there is between there will be a difference so that difference is known as mass defect okay and so uh, usually we are, they try to tend to lower energy states which have greater mass defect so uh, but we don't have to worry about this right now we just to understand you know what the root of the instability of these uh, radioactive uh, in, um, nuclear radioactive atoms okay so typically the parent atom that atom that decays is called the parent atom it decays to a daughter atom which has a higher ionic binding energy per nuclear okay so the mass defect translates to something called binding energy and um, so this binding energy will be higher uh, per nucleon if when in the daughter cell, for the daughter atom okay so that is basically a transition to a much so called lower energy state or a stable state okay so again these are the terms that go into the, uh, describing radioactivity right radioactive atom is said to decay when the nucleus is rearranged so if you have the rearrangement of the nucleus in terms of its you know atomic number uh, or mass number then it's called uh, it's called all the radioactive uh, it's called a radioactive decay right and there is also a terminology used which is usually you will see is called disintegration a disintegration is basically a radioactive atom undergoing radioactive decay okay and usually this radioactive decay is accompanied by some release of energy which which is of course what uh, happens in some cases like the release of energy is in the form of gamma radiation which we measure okay so there are two several types of radioactive decay so we'll look at two which are commonly used in uh um, nuclear medicine or in you know, a radio nuclear imaging okay so the uh, one of the uh, uh, modes of radioactive decay is by through positron emission okay so in this case what happens in the atom is that a proton transmutes into a neutron and a positron positron is nothing but the anti particle of the electron same mass of the electron opposite charge okay the mass number um, a of does not change so a capital a typically refers to a mass number and z refers to the atomic number since the proton is transformed the proton number reduces okay these positrons combine with the electron so when these are emitted they combine with the nearest free electron and they annihilate and they act ends up in the release of 212 uh, 211 keV photons okay and this actually is used for medical imaging so this is what is used in positron emission tomography because whatever you inject the radio tracer you inject into the body for positron uh, pet imaging it actually uh, emits positrons which then combine with the nearest electron and then release these two uh, vital kev photons which are detected okay so this is one radioactive em emission uh, route which is used in uh, uh, 
positron emission so for instance the example uh, one of the examples of positron emission is flu uh, you know fluorine fluorine um, you know uh, disintegrating into oxygen uh, this is called the electron neutrino and the positron here okay so it's called a beta plus decay this is just for an uh, for sake of illustration right so uh, so if there are lot of um, radioactive compounds or radio tracer which which emit positrons and are found favor in for instance in a pet so one of them that you will come across often um, that is used is the fluorine radioactive fluorine and it's used as fluorodeoxy glucose right so what happens is that they'll replace the oxygen in glucose with fluorine and then you inject into the body so what happens is typically the hypothesis is that tumors have higher metabolism so they'll uptake this is fluorodeoxy glucose right so they lack like, they will they will uptake the glucose much more than regular tissue so a lot of the uh, fdg that you inject will end up in the tumor tissue but remember that the uh, fluorine is a radioactive um, uh, this is radioactive this is the radioisotope fluorine it will emit positrons and then so you will be able to measure uh, whether you know particular uh, tissue uh, mass is actually uh, tumor or not based on the accumulation of this radioactivity there okay so this is just a non natural as a general principle of how you would uh, do uh, positron emission tomography the other um, uh, means of radioactive decay is gamma decay also refers to as an isomeric transition so the the radionuclide is inherently unstable but it there's no transmutation it just goes into a lower energy state by emitting gamma rays okay and uh, in the context of uh, diagnostic imaging you know about 600 to 600 kev it's the same range same so gamma rays nothing but high energy excess high energy photons excess are also high energy photons except that they are just correspond to different energy ranges okay so this is one element which is an uh, example where which undergoes uh, you know uh, uh, decay by uh, just emitting gamma rays so this uh, particular kind of isotope which emit gamma rays are mostly used in something called the single photon emission computed tomography okay i think it's computed or computed tomography either way you want to use it um but typically typically is s spectrated spect s single photon p emission computed tomography okay i think this is computed tomography so it's usually acronym is spect so in this kind of imaging systems um as gamma ray emissions are used okay so each of them will have a slightly specialized hardware so we'll look at them briefly when we uh, when you get there okay so for instance as uh, spect imaging technetium is often used okay this is used widely for instance even for bone imaging as well as cardiac imaging so most of the imaging uh, imaging that is done with uh, spect is uh, involves technetium okay and technetium decays by emitting gamma ray photons okay and, and the emission energy is about 140 keV so how does how do you acquire data for um, you know uh, radio nuclide imaging so just to summarize what we have seen so far so this involves basically um, you know injecting a radio tracer into the body the uh, hypothesis is that in a radio tracer will go and accumulate uh, preferably in certain regions corresponding to the pathology okay and so that's why it's called functional imaging and uh, you what you have to do is but then of course remember it's a radio tracer because it is in actually and i say radio tracer also means that it's in very small quantity you can't inject a lot of radioactivity in a person it will uh, you will of course cause damage so you have very very small uh, uh, amount of uh, radio tracer is injected and they accumulate and uh, you measure the uh, emitted gamma rays for instance if for spect um, or high energy photons you know 212 kev photons um, in case of pet or in you know, for instance or gamma rays in the case of planar scintigraphy we will see that in all three cases you just try to measure the uh, the num number of photons which are exited which are exiting the body due to the emitted radiation right so this detection of the emitted gamma rays is accomplished is accomplished using something called the anger camera or we also call it the gamma camera okay the anger camera is named of the person who invented it anger right um so name of the person so um the it basically consists of a, a collimator up front we saw what we saw that picture of uh, the illustration a few slides ago and um, and and behind the collimator is a very large crystal scintillation crystal which will saw which which converts this high energy incident gamma rays into visible light okay and the visible light output is basically measured by a array of photo uh, uh, photomultiplier tubes or photodiodes okay um so a typical uh, for instance uh, what we'll see will known as planar scintigraphy or even for spect is a large crystal very fairly large crystal connected to multiple photomultiplier tubes right so how does this scintillate create convert to um, uh, light so um, the uh, it basically through photoelectric absorption so the scintillator absorbs the high energy gamma rays with photoelectric absorption 
the electrons resulting from the photoelectric absorption uh, travel through the crystal and in their interactions with uh, multiple electrons they release energy in the form of light photons okay so the imaging geometry is shown here we'll have parallel collimator holes okay so i have not shown the collimator holes here you you can see that something like this a bunch of you know lead um shielding kind of uh, you know array which sticks out of the detector we have the out of the scintillator right it gets much longer here you can think of it like that so the collimator holes are to make sure that the uh, the gamma rays that are hitting the scintillator come from a specific direction right so you can't have you know for instance if you you can't have something from here hitting it you will be stopped by the collimator so everything only in a straight line it it's it so you are making sure that the measurements that you are getting come from a specific region of the tissue and not from everywhere in the body let's say you had no collimator right there's a lot of scattering of the emitted radiation also possible so you won't be able to localize so the collimators are to help to help uh, localize and um, the other aspect is the compton scattering can be disregarded this is again from the energy point of view right because the emitted gamma rays are 140 kv let's say for instance right m40 kv right the compton scattered ones tend to be slightly lower energy so there are ways of disregarding those uh, signals so the compton scattering is uh, that is done away with okay what is measured is the rate uh, activity right activity concentration which is also denoted by a not to be confused with the atomic mass number a okay and of course we always assume that the the uh, gamma rays are more energetic which is true mostly and um, uh, what what happens in the case of planar scintigraphy is just you will get a picture just like a x ray projection we will see that in the next few slides the picture we had here so i i'll just uh, just one second let me just wipe this out so i'm going to draw it on the other side so that it's easy so if you have a collimator here okay so you have a bunch of let's say i'm going to draw with a different different color um you got get a bunch of radioactive radioactive compounds here of the different concentration may be same concentration it doesn't matter so the signal you will be getting so the scintillator is here right and then you have a bunch of uh, let's say the photodiodes are here or the photomultiplier tubes are here right so the signal you will get right is restricted for particular this collimator is that is restricted to this uh, let's say this uh, this projection on the body so this is depth right so the uh, so we are can be sure that whatever measure um, you know signal that you are measuring here the number of which is basically the number of the proportional to the number of gamma rays that that hit this particular part spot in the scintillator they are all restricted to this very small cylinder of tissue inside the body okay so in, but then you know depth uh, you know resolution is kind of difficult to do and there is one more problem there is two types of attenuation that happen so for instance in x rays there is only a the linear attenuation right but here there is also a 1 over r square attenuation because radiation is emitted in all directions okay so it's not like radiation is preferably emitted along the direction along the uh, you know towards the detector right so 1 over r square there's a 1 over r square uh, uh, fall off in the uh, flux uh, of the radiation also there is an attenuation the exponential e raised to minus mu uh, the depth so those two are always uh, happening when you do this um, in um, radio nuclear imaging the other aspect is seen x ray for instance if you can uh, two projections acquired 180 degrees apart are, are the same okay because the path traveled traversed by the x rays will be the same however here is not true so if you have let's say a uh, uh, radioactive um, um, the compound somewhere here right if you measure using a camera on one side of the patient the activity or that you measure will be slightly different uh, will be quite different from the activity that if you have, if you measure it from the other side that is basically you take a measurement from uh, from here right from this side let me draw it properly from this side and then let's say you rotate the camera around the patient and you take a measurement there so because there are two sets of attenuations right one is depth, one each one of them depth, depth dependent and one over r square is basically dependent on the distance to the camera okay so this depth dependence it comes from this d is inside the tissue this is distance to the camera so if you when you rotate the camera both of them change okay so there is a depth dependent attenuation and distance to the camera attenuation both of them at work when you do uh, this uh, gamma gamma ray imaging okay or uh, radio nucleate image so but having said but having said that so we just for planar scintigraphy the detector is translated across the uh, body of the patient and at each point you are, you record the 
amount of ray, uh, you know uh, uh, gamma ray photons being measured and in turn they can be related directly to the activity concentration or the number of disintegrations per second if you can think of that happens inside the tissue at every location okay so this is planar scintigraphy okay so planar scintigraphy it's more a more simple uh, um, you know uh, form of a nuclear medicine imaging or radionuclide imaging it is very similar to projection x ray so where each pixel corresponds to a projection along a line okay so the gray value which is measured by the uh, photomultiplier tubes is proportional to the um, amount of act attenuated activity along that line right uh, but it has to be corrected for depth and distance on the camera okay these will i'll explain this slightly more um, however these are functional images so see projection x ray very difficult to discern uh, anatomy because you have uh, you know multiple tissue types along the path of the x ray and they they attenuate them differently but you won't be able to separate them but in the case of uh, you know even planar scintigraphy even though the it is similar to x ray projections the the, uh, the uh, it measures the activity concentration so you do get functional information okay so for instance tex technetium imaging provides information about bone metal metabolism because technetium mdp this particular isotope is absorbed uh, in the bones preferably okay so uh, what do we have to so this basically this imaging chain consists of a positioning logic uh, positioning logic basically positioning logic is for figuring out where in the scintillator the particular gamma ray hit because it's a single scintillator right there's a pulse site analyzer to reject uh, the uh, you know scattered radiation okay and these together are used to put together they'll be used to estimate the xy position of each event so just going back to the Right. The other, uh, the other one that we talk about, which is closer to X-ray imaging, or the reconstruction is closer to X-ray imaging, is SPECT. It's called single photon emission computer tomography. So what this requires, as the name implies, it's a, it requires a reconstruction. So planar scintigraphy does not require reconstruction. You just translate the camera over the patient at every location. So it's a fairly large area. So you'll be able to get the entire body as you translate over the patient, and you'll get a projection of the underlying activity onto the camera. Okay. here uh, we want to reconstruct so we'll be it's a computer computer tomography thing so uh, we have to reconstruct um, so the requires the uh, camera camera that can rotate around the body okay this is very similar to what is our ct acquiring a series of projection images right at various angles right? that's what i said very similar to ct by projection images uh, we mean here recording emitted gamma radiation at different angles right and it's usually recorded uh, 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 recording emitted re radiation along a line uh, projecting on the camera face right that's what we showed you in the uh, previous illustration right so you always are recording along a straight like a cylinder which is basically projected from the uh, face of the uh, detector right and um, spect requires tomographic imaging techniques and it is typically and most of the spect imaging falls under whole body bone imaging and cardiac imaging okay once again here the problem is projections acquired 180 degrees apart are not the same okay because as i said there are two effects one is depth dependent as attenuation of the emitted radiation also distance to camera will vary okay um, and this of course typically used for gamma ray um, gamma radiation emitters okay so here spect once again it's very similar to ct in the sense that you have a bunch you you uh, you rotate the camera and you measure the radioactivity along the line projecting on to the camera so camera face you know basically if you can think of the collimators as like a cylinder so along in that whatever is confined in that straight cylinder is what you typically image so you do that at every angle and you can also again once again model the underlying activity as some kind of a line integral okay and you should be able to do this uh, very uh, reconstruction very similar to back projection okay the spect uh, once again spect imaging geometry we will see here uh, with this requires an anger camera that can um, rotate uh, One second. So here it's illustrated um, the um, anger camera being rotated around the body, acquiring a series of projections, right? So this, if you look at this, this is a typical camera. It's in 2D. It's like a, uh, it's, it's like a flat panel, if you can, if you can, if you can call it that, right? It's a big crystal with bunch of uh, photodiodes behind the crystal. So you will rotate it. So this is the z-axis. Z-axis always along the um, body of the patient. Patient is lying down. and you would rotate it along the z axis right and at every point you would collect a series of projections very is very similar to the projections that you 
acquire using the um, you know um, um, for for x ray of using an x ray ct detector so very similar to that so you will acquire a bunch of projections here and um, after that you have the similar algorithms for reconstruction so you will have cross sections of radio um, activity concentrations being reconstructed PET is another um, radionuclide imaging modality and uh, positron emitter emitters are used in PET right we saw that so what happens in positron emission is that the, elect the pos emitted positron combines with an electron so let's say it travels maybe a couple of millimeters in tissue before it is annihilated by a uh, by an electron and that annihilation results in the uh, emission of two gamma photons 511 keV and these gamma photons travel in opposite di directions from the point of emission okay so with two angle cameras which are 180 degrees apart both these photons can be measured simultaneously can be recorded simultaneously so how do you know it's simultaneous so we have a small window right so a set of detections you consider to be simultaneous if they fall within a time window of 2 to 20 nanoseconds okay so and this is referred to as annihilation coincidence detection usually acd is the acronym okay see the coincidence detection means that the annihilation event occurred along the line joining the two detecting pixels and uh, the red again same similar to spec and to x-ray ct the heads are rotated to collect annihilation data at different angles and uh, once again there is a tomographic reconstruction formulation so you get cross sections of uh, the radio tracer activity concentration okay. so for instance here is the pet imaging geometry so you will have a bunch of uh, you know you can think of this as the akin to a projection right this is the projection this is the axis along which you have the projection right so you have a bunch of detectors uh, parallel detectors 180 degrees apart each of them detecting coincidence events along this line along this line okay they will detect coincidence uh, detections along this line and you, and of course these so that, that that means that you know you can actually form a so called sinogram from these uh, projection measurements right so how do you say it's projection because any let's say uh, some uh, you know the 212 um, uh, two or the 511 kev photons are emitted from this location so you will have uh, one detection here another detection there but if you see you will see that the uh, uh, this actually travels a certain distance in tissue this actually travels slightly different distance in tissue and both of them are attenuated according to the exponential attenuation formulation we had for x-ray photon so it's the same formulation and once again you can cast the problem as i is in the form of a radon transform and try to reconstruct okay very similar to that i mean i'm just giving you a kind of a very a toy version of this uh, formulation of a reconstruction uh, problem okay so uh, the the projections are acquired in this way which is basically you have um, detectors 180 degrees apart which detect uh, coincidence events and then you're rotating along this axis, right so you'll have a gantry onto which these detectors are set and then you rotate the gantry and you acquire a bunch of images of course the patient is uh, along the z axis the axis of rotation which is basically if you can think of it as going into the plane of the screen the patient bed okay so here are some examples of radionuclide imaging if you have not seen this already so for instance on the left um, is the accumulation of uh, you know in this case this is uh, positron emission tomography imaging i believe and this one is spect right on the right is spect imaging in this here there is accumulation of radioactivity in the bone which you have seen right there right i'm not going to do any diagnosis but i'm just telling you what the images look like once again these images the images from uh, the uh, from uh, the uh, uh, spect have been superimposed on an anatomical image i think in this case ct image okay similarly uh, the images from spect have been superimposed on a on a CT image here. So this is basically the images from the SPECT system. This shows an abnormality in the heart. Okay. And uh, similarly, the scintigraphy, right? Here, this is uh, dynamic renal scintigraphy. From here, you can measure how much each kidney over time, if you measure this, the radioactivity in the kidney, you, you can, you can uh, figure out how much uh, uh, each kidney is contributing to the bladder output. So these are them are the kidneys and this is the bladder, right? That's, that's we can measure. Okay. So this is how you see that there is no basically no uh, anatomy here, right? It is just a bunch of uh, blobs which indicate the presence of the radio tracer. So the previous images will also look the same except that they have been superimposed on top of a structural uh, information. So typically there are these uh, PET CT scanners so called uh, 
now we have i think pet mr also so the pet uh, scanner is used uh, is used for imaging for the functional imaging which is done after the injection of radioactivity and the ct scanner will be uh, used for getting this for, for structural information so they superimpose or fuse both of these reconstructed images and that's what you will be able to see okay so uh, without that information it will be very difficult to interpret but a very experienced radiologist uh, nuclear medicine radiologist will be able to interpret these images okay so where we conclude our review of the common um, diagnostic uh, imaging or radiological imaging systems um, uh, and this idea is to just give you a flavor of the kind of systems available and the kind of images you will run into if you actually do um, for instance a career in medical image analysis or even diagnostic radiology for instance with a bunch of images and you have to know understand what these images are so kind of adds to your domain knowledge so thank you